What's up, ball fans? What's up, SEC fans? Catfish here. Bringing it to you live from Laredo, Texas. Headed to, to the house. Tell you what, I'm super pumped. Not only am I going to the house, but this is the day they're going to terminate Butch Jones. Throwing me a watch party. Got me some pork rinds, some popcorn, peanuts. Why don't y'all join me? in this festive great day in Tennessee football history. Here we go. Well, it's about to begin. This is a great day in Tennessee football history. This is what I'm talking about. Let's see if we can get this thing going up here. I'm excited. How about you guys? Here we go. Well, good to see everyone. Uh, just going back to Saturday night. Uh, again, same thing Where's we talked Curry? about after the game. When you watch the video, just way too many missed opportunities. Uh, on, on both sides of the ball and even in the return game and on special teams. Defense he's acting like he's not fired. Four turnovers, but again, field goal attempts. Uh, that's all we were able to come up with. with Are you points. kidding me? We had control of the field position game and didn't, didn't take full advantage of it. That was probably the, well, that's an understatement. the most disappointing things of the game. Are you kidding me? They're not we firing him? On defense, particularly in the run game, as we all know in this conference, it starts uh, with the ability to stop the run, and we weren't able to do that. Uh, some positives, though, did occur. I, I was really excited about the play of all three running backs. I thought all three I believe in this. Up, not only on the field, but off the field in terms of leadership, the sideline. You look at Ty Chandler, he had 120 yards, and then he had an 80-yard uh, run called back. So I thought Ty uh, you know, brings some different dynamics to our offense, so it was great to see there. I think Jared continues to improve. I think he's making significant process uh, progress game in and game out. It's hot in here. I'm getting upset. Back that were touchdown throws that we left out there. Yes, uh, but that's all. Touchdown throws. We don't even know what that is. Freshman quarterback, but again, we didn't turn the football over offensively. And then, you know, one of our best players is Trey Smith. Hey, Trey, just you know, week in and week out, just a high level of consistency. <clears throat> plays with great toughness, great energy, everything that we talk about in our football program, and. Again, he's only a true freshman, but really, really been proud of him as well. In terms of Southern Miss, the, it's kind of been a constant theme all year. It's a very, very talented defense, a very, very veteran group, very, very disruptive. They're only giving up 100 oh, shut up. of rushing. Uh, again, they make your earn every yard. You're they acting like they're the Green Bay Packers. Total defense in 12th in the country for tackles for loss, and it's a little bit of a, a, a defensive uh, scheme. Uh, it's similar, what a letdown! Than any scheme we've seen all year, and then you know, same thing on offense. A lot of orbit motions, jet motions, in motions. Uh, the only motion you need to be worried about is the motion you need to be making, packing your crap, and getting it out of town. You know, if you had any dignity, you'd just resign. And John Curry, if you had any gajones, you'd have fired him. But you talked about We're going to let Florida players. beat us to the punch, uh, and I'm not going to let you off the hook, Curry. Anything, but do you think it would help the players to kind of know, you know, what's going on a little bit as far as preparation? No, our players, just like us, it's back to work for another week. So I don't think, you know, again, it, they're ready to go, just like our coaching staff. So, again, it's a week-to-week -week season, as we talk about, and it's all about Southern Miss. And His dang cliches kill me. Stadium for homecoming. Which what did you see on film regarding the sacks Saturday night that, that need to be addressed? You need to be asking him why he hadn't packed the stuff or called Mayflower to come get it. You say seven sacks and right away you think right right away with the offensive line. It there better be some hard questions asked. I tell you that right now. Throw the football away, uh, understanding field position and where we're at. And sometimes it was a covered sack and you have to throw the football away. Sometimes. Okay. This was a waste of money. I thought it was going to be party food. Sometimes, you know, it's uh, a missed assignment or a running back, so it wasn't just on the offensive line. I think, you know, each of them was different in terms of sometimes the rhythm 
throw isn't there. That's part of the maturation process. Throw the ball away. God, it's the cliches. Kill me. Negative yardage plays, especially in the red zone. So there was a lot that went into it. Going back to Saturday night, you had said that you felt absolutely had the support of Curry. How, how is that? How do you feel 30, in the last 36 hours? Well, there's How's a good that question. Changed, if at all, and what feedback have you gotten from in those last 36 hours? Nothing has changed at all. Which there was the um, unsportsmanlike penalty situation early. It's only five minutes. Yeah, ago. well, that's a good question, Jimmy uh, Himes. I understand it's not the first I want to know. Happened, but it's very rare. What explanation did you get, and how much do you think it hurt you late not to have a two league golf? It, it is very rare. I want to say it's may have happened only one time in the SEC, uh, and it's very it's. it's I want to know what that one time is. But it was something where you know just the start of the game, and the officials wanted to make sure. You know, everything was under control and, you know, it gets back to discipline. We talked to our, our players about it, but, you know, now you kind of. Discipline's on you, you know, Butch Jones. Team. And, uh, you know, I thought it affected both teams and it took two of our best players off the field defensively. But, again, you also have to have restraint in that situation and understand the situation. It's something we'll continue to talk about. But you're right, Jimmy, though. That situation has not happened very often. That's Curry? a very, very rare occasion. It was a hard-fought contest. You know, it was a it was a game where the you know where both teams are playing for a lot, and both teams wanted to win. And number fifty-one kept fault starting. He needs to be benched. And if you haven't benched him by now, you're an idiot. One year to the next. How are you dealing with that disappointment personally? And just in terms of your family as well, with all this said in the community or on social media? I'm, you know, in terms yeah, of... Yeah, on Volunteer Roadshow's channel, a lot has been said. But not discouraged. Uh, you you know, should be discouraged. You're a joke. Football and, you know, so do our players. And, you know, it's been one of those years when you look, I think we've had four plays come down to the final play of the game. I get not giving uh, up. You know, but being able to close games out. But, you know, just like anything, and things don't go always according to plan. And, we always say football's life just sped up a lot faster, and that's truly what it is. And what you have to do is you have to continue to just go about your business and work to be better for it and learn from it and uh, have that internal drive to win and do everything necessary that it takes. Does to he practice these cliches? He's got to. The they can't time. come that natural to anybody. You know, in terms of my family and all that, you know, I, there's been a ton of people that have been supportive. And uh, this is a great Ooh. community. I think that's a, we have a lot of, great lot of hyperbole there. there. A ton of people. <laughs> he must not read the newspaper, watch the news. If I was a fan, I'd be upset too. So well, we are upset. With them. Uh, but also, I understand we need to, to win some football games, and I'm going to do everything in my power for our players, for our university, for our program to get that done. Butch, two questions. I have one, can you offer an update on, on John Kelly and, and Will Ignat? Yeah. And then two, um, is when and, and how Will did uh, Quentin's shoulder injury occur? Well, uh, first of all, uh, with John Kelly and Will Ignat, they'll be back at practice today. And, uh, you know, we'll see how the week of preparation goes, uh, whether they'll be available for the game or not. That's, that's on them. Uh, in terms of, of Quentin, you know, I think it's something that is, that is uh, you know, been bothering him for quite some time. And, you know, he's tried to fight through it, but, um, you know, felt at this point in time surgery was needed and very, very appreciative to him of him trying to fight through and battle through it. And, you know, we'll be there for him. I need some answers from John Curry, and back he back needs back to push. have a press conference. What he's been, been hiding. He needs to come out and talk. The last 36 hours meeting after the game and then yesterday, and then in turn, what, what has kind of been your message to, to recruits and commits uh, with just kind of the way the last month has unfolded? Well, I'm a sitting duck, don't come month, here. But, you know, the message has stayed the same, you know. Uh, it's been unfortunate with some of the things that's happened this year, but this is where your character is really tested. You know, you find out about the resolve and the resiliency of yourself and everyone around you. And, uh, you know, character's on display. And, and resolve and resiliency. What we have, what we I hate those two words. Here. They understand He's our made me hate them. So, you know, that really has been a non-factor because they know what we're all about. Uh, in terms of, again, John and I talk every day. Uh, he's been, he's a great person to work for. And, uh, 
So Obviously. He won't fire you for lack of performance. As far as the kicking situation goes, do you see uh, Brent Samaglia staying in that role as a starting place kicker? That's a stupid we'll question. Let's to, get uh, all to the nuts and bolts of why back. Fall I Nation's think, upset. Uh, I want to hear some answers. These reporters are acting you know, like Josh, it's nothing. Any other injury updates you have? Yeah, uh, the most significant injury from the game was Josh. Uh, it's an ankle, so he will be out this game. That was really the only significant injury in the game. But Josh will definitely be out. But you, you said you, you speak with, with Curry every day. Have you been given any reassurances about your status beyond this season? All we do is we talk about day by day and week by week. And uh, that's been the constant theme since he came here. And, again, our conversations are from anything to everything. Butch, uh, it seems like in the run game you had a lot more success against the Bear Front than you'd had in, in recent games. Particularly looked like, I don't know if you'd call that outside zone where you had a version of it where you had Trey pulling and getting him out in front. Uh, just why were we able to have that much success? Well, again, I think uh, I, I thought our offensive Kentucky's coach Kentucky's defense sucks, obviously. I mean, that's a very challenging front to run up against. And, again, they've been very good in rush defense. I thought, you know, offensive line-wise, particularly early in the game, we really ran I'm off so the ball. I'm so disappointed and depressed about this. Blocks. I, thought our I want to hear y'all's comments. Really job of creating what do y'all think about this job they do? I was really pleased with that. And so I think it was a combination. And then, you know, Jared made a few plays with his legs as well. Uh, so, again, I think it was a combination of a lot of those things. And then, you know, some of those, the run game was. Some boys did fight their butt their off. I got to give them that. They so did run hard. Ty Chandler ran hard. College football is, you know, be able to play a multiple front stemming with the bare front at two four. Feels of me ran players. hard. Coach, we saw Evan Berry back to return kicks, didn't get an opportunity, but where is he in terms of playing safety and filling in there if needed? He continues to progress. Uh, this will be a big week for him in terms I of. I hate that you're wearing that orange tee. And again, playing a high CBJ. Competitions, not just on special teams, but also. You don't deserve to wear well. it. So, we anticipate him getting more and more repetitions this week. Gosh! Uh, Butch, two things on the offensive line. How uh, how effective do you think they were in run blocking first? And secondly, who, who will be available on the offensive line? Is Tatum coming back? Uh, Tatum will be day-to-day. -day. I would say right now he's doubtful. You know, those uh, individuals up front, Played through the bumps and bruises. Individuals, and and I hate that word, too. Again, we talk about it every week, but, you know, our depth is very, very limited there. And, uh, you know, these kids understand that and they continue to work. Again, I thought, uh, you know, I thought initially we did a good job of sustaining blocks at the end of the game. Probably didn't do as good a job at the beginning in terms of handling all their pressure. And that's something at the end of the game and closing the game out, we have to do a much better job of. Uh, but again, you know, the thing I liked about, you know, the players is they're battling and they continue to battle. Grant Hubs. <laughs> If it wasn't conveyed in the significance, they weren't listening because they were reminded that every change of possession. Because they're tired they of listening to your crap. On the bench, uh, when the other side of the ball was on the field, so we constantly reminded them of that. Uh, you know, I've looked at you know both personal foul penalties. I've talked to the league office; they've been great in, in understanding and giving their view. You know, and, and some of it was just trying to get the game under control, and it's football that happens all the time. In terms of the suspensions by rule, is uh, both individuals, uh, that's only an in-game, so it does not carry over to the final game. But again, we have certain standards and expectations of conduct, and we'll continue to review that within our football program as well. In 
and make sure my notes are right. Uh, as it relates to Quentin, that's an ongoing injury. Did that factor into the decision to change quarterbacks when it did? You know, there's a lot of factors that went into it. Um, so, again, <coughs> Quentin tried to battle through it, and we great, greatly appreciate that. But, you know, there's a lot of situ- decisions that go into, you know, who the starting quarterback's going to be. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're not welcome. I tell you what, we hadn't heard two words out of John Curry about this situation. He needs to be having a press conference and explaining his lack of action. There's a lot of us fall fans that deserve to know and we need to know. Maybe they're just, I'd like your your input on this in the comments. Maybe they haven't found anybody. And they're waiting to find somebody and and not have an interim coach. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they told him, hey, you're finishing out the season, but we're looking. If that's the case, I understand keeping that under wraps. But I sure would like to know. This is hard to take. I don't have any words. I'd like to know. Am I overreacting on this? I'd like to know your opinion. Y'all heard the press conference. You know, I was going to be throwing a party. I was excited. I went in there and took a shower. I got all cleaned up. Got me some popcorn and pork skins. And what a letdown. Now I've got, at least I'm going home. That That is a good thing. I'll be home about 3 o'clock in the morning. Be home for a few days. Get me some rest. I've been running the midnight shift lately and it's been hard on me. I really appreciate you all. Y'all keep me going. If it wasn't for y'all, I'm, I'm not joking around here. If it wasn't for y'all, I don't know. It, it'd be a lot harder life for me to take, and y'all bring a lot of a lot of joy to my life, and I thank you. So thanks for tuning in. Go Vols. We're going 8-5 and because we're beating the fighting Farves, but 